In this video, we will be setting up our empath rules and peering rules on our two still ahead appliances. This will finally get into the WAN optimization of our network and we will see the performance demands increase. Now, before we set up these rules, we're gonna bring up a updated diagram that I created that is basically an extension of our other network diagram. So the main thing that you will see here and what you need to consider when it comes to WAN optimization is to determine the flow of traffic or the download and upload of traffic. Well, at our remote site and commonly at most remote sites in a practical environment, we do not have any local servers. All of the servers are located in the data center at the headquarters office. So in our environment, our clients in our topology will be downloading or uploading files from the server over the WAN to their computer. This means one of the appliances will be configured for an empath rule and the other appliance will be configured with a peering rule. A empath rule is configured on the still head appliance where a new connection is being established by a client. It does this to determine the still head behavior with TCP send packets being sent. A peering rule is configured on the other appliance. This will determine how a still head appliance will react to a probe query, basically the auto discovery component, and making a match to an incoming TCP send packet. So these rules will define what the source network, the destination network, and the still head appliance discovery process, which we talked about in the overview and design video. So in our topology and based on the traffic flow, we will add a empath rule on the remote site still head appliance, and we will add a peering rule on the headquarters appliance. So with that being said, what we need to do is we're gonna first add our empath rule on our remote site appliance. But first, we need to make sure that empath mode is indeed enabled. To do that, go to optimization and then to general service settings. And here we see that it is enabled right here, which is what we determined during the initial configuration step, if you remember. If not, make sure that it is checked here. Furthermore, we have WAN optimization enabled on the virtual NPATH interface, which is represented as NPATH00. This is important in order for our appliances to optimize the traffic that will flow between them. Next, let's go to optimization and go to NPATH rules. And this will show a list of default NPATH rules. The first three are pass-through rules, which is reflected for the type, which is right here, the first three. This means that it will allow TCP send packets to flow based on the source and destination that is listed here, but it is not doing any optimization. The bottom rule is basically a catch-all that will optimize all traffic flows automatically. For us, we do want to define specifically what we want to optimize so you can understand how this works and to not rely on only the default rule that we see right here. Furthermore, these rules work very similar to any type of rules like with a firewall, for example. So for each client connection that begins a new connection, its local still head appliance will check the in-path rules. It will check from the top down until there is a match and it will stop looking. Therefore, we need to place any custom rules towards the top so it can be checked quickly. Now let's add a new rule for our clients initiating new connections to the server over the WAN. We want that traffic to be optimized. So let's add a new rule by clicking on this link right up here at the top. And on this page, we only need to fill out a few options or fields here. We will discuss other fields under its appropriate section and other topics that are relevant. So first, we need to select the type of rule that we'll be adding, and this is very, very important. So there are many listed here, so let's cover some of them. The first one here is auto discover. This will do an auto discovery or a probe query to determine if the remote, the server in, so head appliance on the other end is able to optimize the connection attempt by the packet that will be sent. 
Another option is pass through. And as I discussed before, this will not do any WAN optimization over our WAN. Another option here is called fixed targets. And this means that our still head appliance will not do any auto discovery for other appliances along its data path. Instead, you need to specify the IP of the still head appliance that exists on the other end. So it's a lot of work there, but that's what you can do for that particular option or for that type. The option deny, that means that the send packet or the connection by the client will be dropped and a message will be reported back to the source. And another option is discard. And this is the same as the deny option, except it will silently drop the connection and it would not send any messages back. So from this list, it's recommended to use auto discover so our remote site appliance can discover the appliance on the server end and then optimize the connection. So let's go ahead and select auto discover, which it is by default. For the source subnet, that will be our remote site user network, which is 18.1.0 and the appropriate mask. And the destination subnet will be our server network at headquarters, which is 172.17.2010 with the appropriate mask. Okay, and this will apply for any application or port that is initiated by our client. Next, we will leave all of the policy options right here at their default policies, which is the most common for the selections. For the position, we will add this new rule at the very top or the start of this rule list. And we do that by clicking here for position and saying start. And let's put in a useful description for reference for what this rule actually is doing. Oops, in path. So it said in path rule for remote gateway to our headquarters router or the gateway router. And let's make sure that this rule is enabled, which it is by default, which you see right here. And once we are done, let's go ahead and add this rule. And now we see that rule listed up here at the very top of the rule list. Next, let's save our configuration by clicking up here. Our next task is to add a peering rule on the headquarters appliance matching most of what we did here. Therefore, let's go to our headquarters appliance, which is right here, and let's go to optimization and then to peering rules. And that will redirect us to this page showing, once again, default rules. And at the top, you will see that enhanced auto discovery is enabled. Now let's add a new rule by clicking here for add new peering rule. And this will have minimal fields compared to a NPATH rule. So for the rule type, let's go ahead and select that. These are the available options. So pass through means that this still head appliance will not respond to auto discovery or probes from other still head appliances, which means it would not optimize the connection. This will simply allow TCP send packets and pro packets just to continue on transparently. Except that means that this still head appliance is able to respond to auto discovery or probe queries. It also knows that it will be the peering still head appliance for the connection that started at the remote site, for example, which means that it will optimize the client connection that was established. Now for the type auto, if the still head appliance is not using enhanced auto discovery, then it will have the same effect as the accept option. But if enhanced auto discovery is enabled, then the still head appliance will become the optimizing peer only if it is the last still head appliance in the data path to the server. So for our deployment on this appliance, the type that we want to select is accept. Next, we want to place this rule at the very top or start of this rule list. For the source subnet, that will be the remote site user network. And the destination subnet will be the server network. Okay, and this will be for all ports and for any still ahead appliance that could be the peer on the client end. 
Let's also put in a useful description for reference. Okay, and once we are done, let's go ahead and add this rule. Okay, so now we see that rule listed right here at the very top. And let's go ahead and save our configuration.